Over 93% of your traffic is leaving your website without converting. But what can you do about it that won't cost you a fortune? That's this week on Think Tank Tuesday. Hi, I'm Paul Potratz, and welcome to this week's Think Tank Tuesday. Guys, there's n- I've never missed a Tuesday in the last three years, so I wanted to make sure I didn't miss this Tuesday either. I'm out, I'm traveling, so I'm going to do a screen flow. We're going to do it online. I know you don't get a chance to see what kind of tie or suit I'm wearing this week, but that's okay. So the question is, what can you do to start converting more traffic on your website? I mean, if you look at the numbers, you'll see that 93%, we see that number right around, anywhere from 90 to 95% of the traffic coming to a website will not convert. And that's, I mean, regardless of the website platform you're really looking at. I mean, look at all the different website platforms on there, and that's a nice average. So you've got this traffic coming to your website. You're spending all of this money. You're buying radio. You're buying TV. Maybe you're even buying newspaper. Maybe you're buying direct mail. You're doing paid search. You're doing retargeting. You're doing you know, display advertising. You're doing email blast. You're doing, 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 doing. And you've got your website on all of that material. You're pushing all of this traffic to your website, but they're coming to your website and they're not converting. I mean, think about it. When was the last time that you went home, you turned on the TV and said, all right, show me the TV, you know, show me the TV spot, show me or show me the commercials. When's the last time you flipped on the radio and said, all right, I want to hear the commercials. And when was the last time you went to a website because you were interested in that service or that product? Yeah, that happens all the time. My point, what I'm trying to tell you, the people coming to your website are interested. They might not be completely sold on buying, you know, getting their vehicle serviced or buying a car today, this weekend, but, you know, they could be persuaded to. But you've got to ask yourself, why is it that I'm getting all of this traffic to my website and I'm not getting more leads? Well, my wife, uh, those of you that know my wife, her hobby is horses. I don't know why. I don't know why she's into the horses because I say it. They're wild animals. And why would anybody want to, you know, take their life in their own hands and get on a horse? But that's her hobby. So she said, honey, you know, we need a trailer because I want to be able to, you know, go to these different horse clinics and learn more about it and all that. I was like, okay, you just want to increase the odds that we can do the life insurance policy on you. And I said, but uh, before the trailer, we kind of need a pickup truck. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's right. So I, Hey, good. All right, fine. I'm all about it. You know, I've never had a pickup truck, but why not now? So I did my homework and I started searching. I started looking and I found out that I need a bigger pickup truck to be able to pull a horse because I I know how what's going to happen. We'll get the horse trailer. And then the next thing I know, it's going to be one of her friends and then two of her friends and then three of her friends. Before you know, we're pulling these four, you know, massive animals to some clinic somewhere. So I go to Auto Trader. I go to cars.com. I go to dealers websites. And I'm like, so frustrated. And I'm thinking, aren't these guys watching Think Tank Tuesday? Don't they know what's going on? And I mean, so I'm going to show you some really simple things that you can do. I'm not going to go into stuff about, oh, you got to do content development and you've got to do a video pre-roll with a retargeting with a stop pixel. I'm not, I'm not going to do all that. I'm going to do stuff this week and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to be doing, that there's no excuse that you can't do it. So here it is. I'm going to do the search and I'm going in and I'm looking for a newer pickup truck. And let's say, all right, let's go 2014 to 2015. And I want an F-250 because this is the search I went through. All right. So here it is. So here it is. F-250, 65,000, 58,000. Oh, here's some cheaper ones. 37,000, 44,000. But do you see what I'm telling you? Do you see what I'm really pointing out here? If I go down this page, it's frustrating. And what I'm talking about, have you picked up yet? Any idea what I'm talking about? There's no photos. So I thought maybe I'm just the weirdo. Maybe I'm the freak show that that wants real photos. And guys, I'm in the industry. I'm in the business. I'm around vehicles all the time. So I started going around the office, you know, informal survey, and I started saying, hey, guys, when you were shopping for a car, because I've got a, you know, we've got a lot of people here in our office in Schenectady and a lot of new cars in the parking lot. 
and so I asked him, I said, when you were shopping for the new car, was seeing the pictures important to you? And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just yes after yes after yes after yes. And it, it made me think of a conversation I had with a dealer years ago. And I said, you need to get photos in there of, the, of the, you know, real photos of the new cars. And the dealer said, Paul, I don't see why. I mean, it's a brand new car. There's really nothing to see. You know, a Ford Taurus is a Ford Taurus. And I'm like, yeah, there is something to see. Because when we go to purchase something, we get emotionally involved. We get psychologically involved. And if you get real photos, I mean, and you can see all of these dealers, I mean, I, and I could just go page after, let's increase the radius here too. Let's go out for 200 miles. And I'm going to show you what's going to happen here. And think about it. Good advertising is about being different. So now I'm going down and here's one for 67,000. It's a real photo. So here's a real photo. And then stock, stock, stock. Oh, a couple real ones. Another real one. But you see how these guys are doing the stock photos and how some of these guys are doing real photos. That's 2014. But let's change it up a little bit. Let's say that I only want new. I'm going to go with a 2015. I'm going to update results here. And let's see what happens. But I see the, the pictures coming in for the dealers. Let's see, it's a new one. So good job for that one. Good job for that one. But a lot of dealers here are not doing photos. You've got to do photos. And if you want to take it a step farther, do video. But I want you to do a quality video. In other words, I want you to do it on an iPhone. I want you to do it on a Droid. I want you to record it. I don't want you to pay a company for the video because I've seen some of those videos. And i got to be honest with you, they did not engage me. Not what whatsoever did they engage me. Not at all. So photos. That's a low-cost way for you to start getting more conversion on your own website, on AutoTrader, on Cars.com. I mean, you're already paying a lot of money to be on these, these different properties. So what's a little bit more money to put real photos on there for somebody to really get engaged with the product and plus for you to be able to stand out? So there's your first tip. Now let's go to number two. I want to talk about number two, and it's seller's comments. You've got to start doing seller's comments because I was so frustrated. Let's see if this dealer is doing seller's comments because I was trying to find leather interior. That's what I was wanting to find. And I mean, granted, this dealer has photos, which makes it a little easier so I could see, yes, okay, he's got leather. Is that cloth right there? Or is that leather? Is it like a leather cloth combo? I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm thinking it's leather, but I'm not positive. And I could see that, you know, a lot of the dealers, the information's here. But when I read into this information, it's like a copy and paste seller's comments. It's just all blah, 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 blah. You know, this dealer's doing a little better because I was trying to find out what is the payload. So I was half, having to hop around to a lot of different websites to research. You get my point? I mean, maybe I'll just repeat that again. I was having to move around to a lot of different websites to get my information. So yeah, the seller's comments are critical Tell the people, tell them what size wheels, tell them if it's, you know, what the payload capacity is, tell them if it's got leather interior, tell them if it's got added features, tell them if it's got sunroof, give them all of the information. I mean, don't, if you just leave it for chance, they're going to other different websites. And if you read the study last year that JD Power did, a car shopper is visiting an average of 21 to 22 different websites to gather information before the purchase. So seller's comments, I mean, again, that's another way it's very low cost, or in fact, it's even free for you to be able to, to get them the information and get them to engage. And here's a, another one I want to tell you about, because I seen a couple dealers, what they did is they said, you must mention this ad to get the low, low internet price. Don't do that. Because again, you got to think about the, the psychological, what's happening when you do that. What I automatically thought, and again, I'm in the industry, of course, as you know, I automatically thought, oh, so basically you're going to take advantage of me if I didn't see this ad. So now it, it automatically made me become a little more defensive going, oh, well, that dealer. And I seen one in Long Island that did that. And I was like, oh, well, that dealer is going to try to take advantage of me. And I went ahead and submitted a lead to eight different dealerships. And it was amazing. 
uh, yeah, he tried to take advantage of me is the way it, it felt. But anyway, maybe he didn't. I don't know. So there you go. That's number two, seller's comments. Now let me give you number three. Number three is so easy. Again, I got so frustrated because I went around to the different websites and, uh, you know, I'd go to the dealer's website and I would try to check it out and see if he had more pictures. And of course he didn't because it's a feed. But then I submitted the leads on eight different websites and I told him exactly what I had that, hey, I've got this, uh, you know, Transit Connect van and here's the VIN number, here's the model, here's the mileage, here's all the details about it. And I told him, I said, hey, give me a rough estimate of what you will give me for tr give me in trade on this Ford Transit and tell me, you know, what's your best price? I know, typical, you know, person shopping for a car. And I emailed it to eight different dealerships. How many do you think got back to me and said, well, here's the price? One. Well, in fact, that's actually a lie. Seven of them just out and out told me, uh, you have to bring the vehicle in. And I'm like, really? I travel all the time. There's no way I can do that. I mean, it, that would take a weekend. And when I'm able to go and do this, you guys are closed. But I had one dealer that was in Vermont in the middle of nowhere. The sales manager called me and said, hey, Paul, I want to talk about that transit. Need a little bit, a little more information on that transit. So he hooked me. I picked up the phone. I called him. Very nice gentleman. I mean, he was, and he went through it and he pulled up some numbers and he said, Yeah, you know, hey, I'm a fair guy. I'm thinking I could probably give you around this. You think, you know, he, of course, he asked me, Well, what are you expecting to get out? I was like, I don't know. I'm a fair guy too. But he said, I think I can get you between this and this, you know, within 500 bucks. And I'm like, Okay, what's the best price on your truck? He said, I've already marked it down. I could save you another 500, maybe a thousand bucks on it. And you know how it works. And, you know, I could move money to, you, to your transit or move money off the truck, but this is what I really need for the truck, and this is what I think I can give you on transit. I'm like, sold, done. All right, good. I knew what I was expecting. All right, so there you go. That's the next that little tip. The next thing I want you guys to do is to understand the traffic coming to your website. What is the exit strategy? So let me take you over to a website here. So let me show you this little tool. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to reload the website. So now I'm on the website and I'm clicking around and I'm looking at cars and I'm just not feeling it. Maybe you don't have the right color. Maybe the price is too high. Maybe I, I need to go to another website. Maybe I need to research some more. Again, 22 websites is what people visit. And now I'm getting ready to leave the website. Boom. This is an exit strategy. This is a low cost way for you to be able to start capturing that traffic that's already on your website. I'm getting ready to leave the website. Boom, this pops up because this is a technology. It watches the mouse and whenever the mouse breaks the plane, in other words, when they're moving around and they go, bam, this pops up and says, hey, want to get an additional $500 in your next trade? Yes, get my additional $500 now or no, I like paying full price for my cars. I mean, who's really going to click no? So they click yes, they go in, first name, last name, phone number, email address, and then they tell you what they're doing, shopping, comparing, browsing, looking to test drive, ready to buy, searching, what you know, however it is. They fill that in, they get a coupon, this goes into your CRM. So there you go. I gave you some low cost ways to be able to start capturing more leads off of your website. You've already got the traffic, so I'm not saying to increase your budget for SEM and third-party leads. Start working with what you got. And if you want this pop-up strategy, it's called the Exit Gadget. It's right here on the page on our website or call us. Just pick up the phone and call us 518-631-5505 and ask for Brian. Again, it's 518-631-5505 and ask for Brian or ask for Samantha. And they can get this turned on on your website. And this is really, really low cost. So there you go. I gave you some really good ideas to be able to increase the traffic to your website. And guys, the next time somebody emails you and wants to know, you know, what they could get for the trade, just tell them, hey, I need some more information on that vehicle. Can you give me a call? And they'll call you. So there you go. Have an awesome week. And hopefully I'll be back in the studio next week, but no guarantees because it's a crazy time of year. And have a wonderful selling week. Thanks. Thanks.